Welcome to Yo Soy Neighborhoods Fresno, where every Central Californian is represented as an equal, innovative contributor of their community. Home to the most underserved population, yet we are the wealthiest area of California, leading an evolution of 21st century change. Thank you for tuning in to Yo Soy Neighborhoods Fresno, coming to you from beautiful downtown Fresno and CMAX Studios. Hi, hi, welcome to Yo Soy Neighborhoods Fresno. Thank you for tuning in today. Um, my associate panelists, Smiley Calderon is here, and we, uh, Oh, you know what, Smiley? I forgot to tell you. You know, Ueli? Yes. Remember our, Ueli, our uh, intern that was helping from Fresno Ueli. State? Ueleni. Yeah. I'm sorry. I butcher names. <laughs> well, I just wanted to share with everyone that Fresno State is going to be having a career day. And uh, their vendors, the way they do it here at Fresno State to get uh, the students associated with the future employers is they have this fair type career day thing and they do it twice a year. Um, I went over and asked about uh, how do they match up people as far as employment and getting them out there. And so each school they have uh, counselors that they are assigned to. So we're going to help them by putting up a, I'm going to create a little video to put this on the air so that some of the students that don't catch some of this information will, will know where to go so they can get help and get to employers. And hopefully we can get some of our larger employers to get in touch with Fresno State and be sure that you're employing our people first. I mean, you don't have to outwardly say it. I mean, we're not doing anything illegal. <laughs> but we need to interview all of the candidates here. And, well, back when I was doing things, they, they would get you out of school. You'd do a little internship, and that was your test. If you fit in with the group and the people and the work, then you're hired. So we need to do more of that. So Ueli, she has a big bill, and she's doing an inventory job, which is not okay. She needs to be doing production work like she was with us. She's a great gal. Sure. Yeah. She's highly educated. Yes. And Sweet. She's a very sweet person and um, also multilingual. Yeah. And that's an asset to any of our ABC, CBS, 47, 24, 26. You're losing a gem. So I don't want to go on about that. What do you think about this election coming up? It's exciting. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. Uh huh. We're having a, quite a bit of a banter you out there. You mean the local election yes, or you mean the, the national? All of it. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> craziness, huh? It is. Yeah, this is, I haven't seen this much banter going on in years and years. It's, it is very exciting. And our local? And lo local elections are, they're on fire, right? They're exciting. Oh, gosh, yes, and our homeless issues are going. So, you know, speaking of that, we have today our guest is Esmeralda. She's running for Congress. She's our local council person. Uh, woman, I say woman. Uh, and she's uh, been working on this homeless issue for quite some time. So we have a little clip that we'd like you to watch for just a moment. And then we'll get to our interview with Esmeralda. How's that? Hello, I am Fresno City Councilwoman Esmeralda Soria. As a member of the California Homeless Task Force, we are working on solutions to our homeless problem. In the last year, Fresno has opened five new shelters to house hundreds of our homeless families with drug treatment, mental health, and support services. This year, our governor has committed an additional $11.5 million to fund treatment programs and housing. If you or someone you know needs help, contact our office for a referral. Well, welcome, um, Council Member uh, Esmeralda Soria. Thank you for being here um, at Yo Soy. Um, 
And so, well, we're thank you, Smiley, and thank you um, for having me here again for the second time. And so, I appreciate just an opportunity to come and chat with you guys about some of the most um, hot issues here going on locally. Yes, we have quite a few. Wednesday was a big day. Uh, you had a press conference, and it was about the homeless. And I think it was uh, Mr. Dyer, who is running for office as well, had put out some information about bringing in some tents. And there were issues about, uh, actually, San Diego has used this system before, and it all created more problems. Is that correct? Did we understand that? Yeah. So we had, um, me along with two of my colleagues, were um, able to come together to talk about kind of the future and really the solution to the homelessness and responding to um, what Mr. Dyer had proposed over a short video ad for his campaign. And so we just came forward to propose um, to say that that wouldn't work um, mm -hmm. and explain what we have already been doing here in the city of Fresno with the county and our local nonprofit partners to begin to tackle this issue. Yeah, it's um, it's been quite a process. You're on the governor's team. Can you explain to the audience what that is? Yeah, so I've been working for um, or on the homeless task force for the governor now for about a year. and representing the Central Valley. There's 13 of us. And so just this last month in January, we provided an interim report, or actually I have here, the interim report that was created by our task force providing some set of recommendations as they started with this new legislative session to begin to continue providing more resources for local cities and counties um, to tackle, which what I believe to be one of the biggest crises that we are facing today in the state of California mm -hmm. um, is people experiencing homelessness in our community. Is, is the governor understanding, like I explained to you, uh, uh, my, my take on that, you know, when I was growing up, we read about all this population growth in advance. And so in my little girl thought process at that time, I thought, oh, well, it'll be nice. They'll plan ahead. We'll have room and everything's going to grow. Nice. And that's the the best picture, best best situation, but we're now in a crisis. In a crisis, which need, didn't need to be. So does everyone understand? These poor people have been out there for five, six, yeah. seven years, and they're not going to be able to get back into even reality for a while. I mean, are you working with getting psychological input from this? So just a couple things what we've been doing here in the city of Fresno with um, in con in you know, connection with the county and also with the nonprofits. We put a plan together. The governor last year um, gave the city of Fresno $3.1 million. With those dollars, what we did, because we didn't have, believe it or not, even though we're the fifth largest city um, in the state, we didn't have a low barrier shelter. Um, there are some beds at the Pavarello House and the rescue mission, but they were still not considered low barrier because what low barrier means is that any person experiencing homelessness can actually go and get a bed um, and be enter with their partners, their pets, and their possessions. Um, no questions asked. The shelter would allow them to come in. And that's what we created. We opened up five um, in the southern portion, southwest portion of um, the city. Where Can you now, share the locations? So those? there's a couple different locations. One is um, the Clinton in the 99, the mental health um, system. It used to be the old motel, if you guys remember. So it was reconverted. Hacienda. Hacienda. Mm -hmm. And there are some 50 bed triage centers there. And so that's specific for people that are having drug and mental People that are experiencing Emotional. homelessness and that come with, many of them come with drug addiction, mental health issues. Mm -hmm. So what the triage center provides is not only a bed, but also wraparound services to be able to get them, um, for many of them, in the 90-day period, which is the goal, to triage them to the next step. Okay. And maybe temporary housing. And then the eventually the goal is to get them permanent housing. And well, during this time that you're planning, I'm sure you're accessing some numbers and some other sources that have 
used this system, have you? Or so yes. Yeah, so the model that we are have taken, uh, you know, there's been a lot of studies, and Barbara Poppy has been. Um, one of the persons that came to the to the city of Fresno to essentially work with us and figure out what would be the best solution to address um, the crisis that we have in front of us. And so housing first is the model that we're using. We want to make sure that people have shelter. And the best way, we said temporary shelter, but being very intentional about the way that we provide the services. Um, when it comes to drug addiction, mental health. We also just recently announced that we are gonna have a homeless jobs program. We've partnered up with Fresno EOC, which is the fighting poverty organization <laughs> here mm -hmm. in Fresno County. Mm -hmm. And they're gonna expand on the program that they already do, um, bringing some of the homeless population and giving them the opportunity to give them a hand up oh, um, with dignity. So yeah, that's good. we're doing it as a pilot. So right now we'll start off with 15 positions this year. Again, 15 positions next year. And we will evaluate. I believe that it's gonna be a success because mm -hmm. we've seen these types of um, pilot programs and job programs in other communities mm -hmm. actually be a success. Back for, east, they yeah, use them. For many of the, mm -hmm. the folks that this is gonna give them kind of a first um, entryway back into mm -hmm. um, kind of, you know, society. By the time um, they get some to that some, point. Yeah, some experience and, you know, hopefully um, be well, able to connect is, them to a future job. Right. So, but that'll be great because then they'll that, that by the time they get to that job offer or interim job they've already started tr getting back into training and they're taking care yep. of the other issues that are lingering and what's good with the uh, the contract that we just entered with Fresno EOC so it's not just a job the job also um, for the 15 individuals is going to provide kind of the training, job training, and the wraparound services. So whoever comes and access these jobs, will ha make, they'll make sure they have a roof over their head. They're having the drug addiction and mental health issues that they have mm -hmm. and um, make sure that, you know, they're showing up to work and get the training they need so that they can... Okay, so I have a question about the, the ladies and the children. I really understand that mm -hmm. the, the Fresno Rescue Mission has a place for the ladies and the children. I don't know if they have the same system that they have for the rescue mission downtown, whereas they, they give them a bed one night or whatever and then they're gone. Or they have a bed, say somebody's coming out of the hospital, they can stay there mm -hmm. maybe a week, they have to make an arrangement. But other than that, once they, uh, they have to have some kind of a contract that they commit to with the rescue mission, it's a totally different system. Than yeah. It's a private organization. Yeah, yeah they right. can do they whatever, whatever they, they want. Yeah. Uh -huh. So for us, what we're doing, we're starting with low barrier. We have a combination of different <coughs> resources that we're providing because what we're trying to do is meet um, people that are experiencing homelessness where they're at. Some people just need help with first month's rent, last right. month's rent, and their deposit. Right. So we actually have um, set aside okay. some dollars to help those those individuals because they don't need to be at a temporary right. shelter. And right? that could that's prevent good. a catastrophe yes, for them. Absolutely. So that's also part of our strategy. That's the great. other thing that we have, um, we have a specific location um, as part of the hacienda. They're separate from the adult population, just strictly for families and children. Oh, Actually, good. I had this opportunity to be able to bless all the kids, uh, I do an annual toy drive, and I was actually able to go see these um, kids that are living there. The goal is um, for us within that 90 day period to stabilize the family and move them on, hopefully to some temporary, like more long term, and then finally the permanent affordable housing. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the long term solution. It's right. looking at building more affordable housing throughout the city of Fresno. Okay, so I have a question because those families, they've, they've been traumatized. Mm -hmm. Are some of the offers that they're giving some in marriage family counseling for the families so that they're the unit starts to stabilize? So any person that comes into our triage center is evaluated. Whatever resources they need, that's those are the services that we wrap around mm -hmm. for every individual, including the family. So absolutely, mm -hmm. if there are mental health issues that they're experiencing as a family because of traumas and the kids, what they've seen mm -hmm. being on the streets, absolutely, mm -hmm. they are receiving those type of uh, services. Council Member Story, I have a question. Um, so. Mm -hmm. Um, Dyer, Chief Dyer, he had this plan about these 
tent places. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe not for a long-term solution, that's not a good idea, but what about for a short-term solution? What do you think about that? So that's kind of what, why we did the press conference. What uh, myself, along with two of my other colleagues, um, stated at the press conference was that we didn't think that that was the best solution, that if we're really one city, we need to make sure that every single neighborhood um, is part of the solution. Because what we've done is concentrated all the shelters into one area of the city. And the businesses in that area, the residents that live in, that, in those neighborhoods have been overburdened. What about the mm -hmm. argument that, hey, it's working out there on F Street in South Fresno, so it's just the, the natural place to put the tent? Well, I would argue that it's not working um, because what we've also seen in other cities like San Diego, as was mentioned by Edna, um, the percentage of success is so low. It's probably like, I think they said 12 or 20%. We, we also, don't want that. The, there's no real success happening. What we are seeing is we're seeing tremendous success out of the models that we existingly have. 70% of the people that entered these triage centers are exiting. And think about it, we've only been in operation since this summer. So it's in a short um, span of time. So what we're thinking is let's build on what we're already doing, but let's make sure that we're putting them in other areas of the city. Because if you go to any other part of the city, the homeless, the people experiencing homelessness are there. Mm -hmm. They're at River Park, they're in West Fresno, they're you know in Central Fresno, they're in mm -hmm. Southeast Fresno. Mm -hmm. So we need to build those low barrier shelters and um, opportunities for some housing and wraparound service in those areas as well. That's great. Mm -hmm. So this has become a political <laughs> issue on the on the, 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 the municipal level, but you're running for for the national level. How will you take this, this passion <coughs> nationally? Well, so one of the things that unfortunately we haven't um, seen the federal government step on is prioritizing this issue. We know, you know, um, President Trump has blamed um, California for the crisis that we're facing, but we haven't received the assistance that we need to continue to tackle the issue. Majority of the help is coming from the state. I believe I, the city of Fresno gets about half a million dollars, uh, maybe a little bit more than half a million dollars um, to address the homelessness issue. It's not enough. So one of the things that I hope to do is to make sure that we bring greater attention, that we lead on the issue, and that we bring more investments for um, this issue. So, so if you were elected to Congress, that would be one of your champion, championing issues that you'd be Yes, ab on. absolutely. Housing is big. So housing, building affordable housing also is kind of part of um, the homelessness issue. And so what I want to do is make sure that we champion that issue, that we bring additional resources. For affordable housing units, um, the city of Fresno only receives about $2 million a year. If we think about how expensive it can be to build an affordable housing unit, um, that would get us four uh, housing units out of the $2 million. That is not enough. That would be, you know, for every year. So what we need to do is expand the resources um, that we have so that we're building permanent affordable housing. We know we live in a city where there's a lot of poverty. Wages haven't gone up uh, at the same rate as the cost of housing. So a lot of people are paying about 70% of their income towards housing. So we know we have a problem, so we have to build more housing in the city of Fresno. I would say we need to prioritize housing in areas like the mm -hmm. BRT corridor, <laughs> downtown, in that inner city. Um, and so we need a lot of investments well, to I come. I a question. Um, <clears throat> if in fact Dyer, is elected mayor, is there any way to stop him or prevent him from creating those? Those tents that mm -hmm. he's, well, he needs to build the support on the council and what we were um, trying to express to him is that you already have three council members that are not um, supportive of your existing vision. Plus, um, the, the current mayor with the county, we've agreed on a, 
on a comprehensive plan together. Mm -hmm. And so we just need to continue to build on that. We made a decision to work together mm -hmm. um, last year when those resources came to the city. So we just need to build on the success that is already there. Right. And you think that a Jan's mayor uh, would do things differently? Well, you know, he's uh, expressed his kind of plan to address the issue. Um, he's pointed to the drive initiative and the economic development that also needs to be pushed. Um, so what needs to happen is we have to have a greater vision, not only for the city of Fresno, but for the entire Central Valley. I think that we have sh short shortchanged um, the community uh, residents. We haven't done enough. We haven't focused on no. the real issues. That's right. And that um, in our valley, in our city, we need change. You know, I was going to say, I'm, I'm excited about your run for Congress. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you were elected, would you be the first Congresswoman in, or what? What, yes. what would this be? Yes, actually, right we've we've never mm -hmm. had a woman in Congress. It's about in, time. In the, in the entire Central Valley. Really? Right. So from Kern right. County all the way to Stanis, we have the to, Girls to in like Orange Merced County, County. we it's, haven't had a it's woman. It's time, don't mm -hmm. you think? So, yeah, no, mm -hmm. absolutely. I, mm -hmm. Absolutely. I believe that um, it, being a woman brings a different perspective. And, you know, just to share one incident, um, even just to highlight how we can bring a different perspective. At City Hall, um, when I was first uh, sworn in that day, I had a young mom friend who was there with her child um, who needed a diaper change, her, her baby did. She went to the restroom, there were no baby changing tables at that time. Oh no. So she had to change his diaper on the floor, right? Who wants to change a diaper on the floor, right? And so what I did as soon as she told me her experience, oh my God. I made a conscious effort mm -hmm. to partner up with um, First Five. They had some grant dollars um, because they were trying to encourage businesses and um, government buildings to bring changing tables to make it a welcoming um, you know, public building. So what I did, mm -hmm. not only did I champion <laughs> to bring changing tables um, in the women's restroom, but also in the men's That's restroom great. because mm -hmm. men also have kids. That's mm -hmm. right. And in addition to that, there are a lot of young moms in our building that we want to encourage them to breastfeed yes. Yes. their kids. So we created a breastfeeding room so that they didn't have to go and pump in the restroom, you know, in privacy. Good. That's great. So Good. it's like those kind of perspectives that I believe are valuable yes. um, to the policy conversations that take place on a daily basis at every level of government. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. We need I think to it'd be... be refreshing to have a woman in, in office. Central. I came from Orange County where we had dual sisters, you remember Loretta Sanchez, Sanchez, right? I, I spent a career at Chapman University where she was a, you know, a, a graduate from there. So we always talked about her and just, you know, her record and it was just amazing. Great lady. Right? A strong yep. woman. It'd mm -hmm. be great to, to mm -hmm. see that here in yeah. the Central Valley. Mm -hmm. No, I think mm -hmm. it, it is great. I think it's also important for our young women in our community um, to see someone that- You're an that, example. Yeah. Absolutely. Because I, mm -hmm. you know what I tell a lot of my students, I'm also a professor, I said, sometimes we feel we can't be what we can't see. Absolutely. And so it's time. Um, it, we live in the Valley. It's 60% Latino. We've never had a Latino in Congress north of the Tehachapi Mountains. Mm -hmm. Think uh -huh. about it. So north of LA area, we've never had a Latino in cro Congress. Well, Tehachapi is Bakersfield. So, That's yeah. Southern California. So the, the person you're running against. Um, Mr. Costa. He's not Latino. No. Mm-mm. But that's irregardless of Latino or not. The bottom line is Mr. Costa has been here a long time and he caters to most of the other people. We need to start having equal coverage. And the other thing is, is that I saw his last ad and he's talking about bringing hospitals and whatnot here. And I said, you know what? You've had plenty of time to do that. This has been going on for quite some time. The population should have had this 15 years ago. We had hospitals and they closed them down. Yeah, and I'm not sure why, because I was gone that time. But I think it's time to start changing people out. You know, this, this lifetime, like Jerry Dyer, he's had, what, 30 years in the PD and they have low morale right now. So what's the sense? Let's just try something new and fresh. Whether it's they're trained or not, uh, Mayor Brand's point is moot. Yeah. If, you were elected, if you were elected, 
how would things be different? Well, yes. one of the things that I c I've committed in my election is to not take um, big corporate money. Um, because what I've seen in Washington, D.C. is that the big corporations and the uh, and these big interests essentially have muted the voices of working families. Um, so my campaign is focused on uplifting working families. We have a lot of poverty in this valley. Um, you know, our current representative um, has had four decades wow. to, mm -hmm. to work on these That's issues. And That's for me, unacceptable. And for me, I'm saying we can't continue to do the same no. and expect mm -mm. different results. Right. We need to try something different. Oh. You know, I, I, I'm a daughter of farm worker immigrant parents, you know, that have worked their tails off. Well, um, plus, I think we need to touch real quickly on your track record. I mean, I'm new to Fresno. When I first moved here, I, I started going to the council meeting council meetings, mm -hmm. and I was just in awe of your presence. Mm -hmm. You were just so dynamic. <laughs> I mean, you weren't afraid. She speaks her mind. You were tough, tough as nails, <laughs> and educated, and just. I thought, well, see, I came from the Loretta Sanchez place, so to me, I'm like, this is this great. Is great. <laughs> this is normal. This is fine. Um, the thing is, is she's done a lot in such a very short. You've done a time. lot. Yes, in her short, there's about four years now? No, five, I'm on my sixth year, entering my sixth year. Okay, so in that short period of time, whereas the other folks, they've had four decades, that's 40 years. You've done a lot for your city, and I think people who know what you've done, and mm -hmm. they can easily see you would fit this position incredibly. Mm -hmm. Thank you. A right. good representative of the people. She would fight the, for the Central the Valley. People. And then, right. you know, one of the also commitments that I've made to individuals, um, I don't know when was the last town hall that our current representative hosted. In That's the five right. years that I've that I've been in office and mm -hmm. I've represented about eighty thousand people, I've had forty five community meetings mm -hmm. in the evening and morning coffees because I want to make sure that if people can't go to City Hall, that City Hall is coming to them. That now, to me is extremely important. No, okay, it's That's easy to do maybe it's easy to do that when you're only have when you have seventy thousand constituents, right? But when you're a mayor, 500,000, or you're a congresswoman, a lot more, well, is that gonna change? I, well, no. I don't know if I could ch do 45, but I will definitely commit that every single year I'm gonna be out um, and have an, um, several town hall, mm -hmm. minimum one in each county, and then I'm gonna make sure that I'm going out to every community like I've been doing during this election cycle, um, city, unincorporated community, um, to essentially not just talk to people, but listen. Um, that's how I've been able to solve the problems at City Hall. I take from what is expressed at these meetings and Absolutely. try to problem solve and, and bring resources to, yeah. to address that. Well, the first time that's I met great. her, she also um, <clears throat> came up with the format that hadn't been used before as far as that first meeting that we talked oh, about. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and people weren't used to it, so that was good. They were just like, what do you mean? Show up and we're going to be I'm part excited. of a team yeah. to be a I committee mean, to actually make decisions in our district. Yeah. And they did very I well. Mean, isn't it a no brainer? Everyone should vote for you. I mean, <laughs> I, oh, I, I don't, what are the reasons not to vote for you? <laughs> right. I mean, you're amazing. Yes. Oh, thank yes. you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a lot of work to do 20, 20 some days. How can we help? Before. What can the community do to help? Well, um, you know, they can share our information. We are on social media. We're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We want to reach every single person, regardless, you know, of age, race, gender. Um, we want to make sure that people know who we are, what we are about. Um, this is bigger and greater than just one individual, that we all have a stake and we can all be part of something um, to bring um, change into the valley and just build a better future. I'm excited mm -hmm. about what this valley can be. There is so much opportunity, oh but God. I think that we yes. need people with vision and that are willing to work hard like you. and stand right. up. It, yeah. it is so, a tough job. I mean, it's constant it on the job, on the go, planning mm -hmm. strategically so that you can, and analyzing things and bringing in, doing a lot of research to bring it mm -hmm. all together. 
it's just not a one day thing. It's like, you're probably not getting much sleep, are you? <laughs> not, not, not nowadays. What's that? You know. <laughs> I'm like, I can sleep after the primary for a little bit and then, you know, mm -hmm. we're on to November. But well, we want to encourage every single person also to make sure they check their ballots. Fresno County is unique in this election cycle. They adopted the Voter Choice Act, which means that every single person actually is going to get a ballot in the mail. Mm -hmm. They're going to have about 11 days to vote because there's voting centers that are going to be open, not just for Election Day, but actually for 11 days. Mm -hmm. And there wow. are um, boxes out there, drop-off boxes mm -hmm. in various places in the neighborhood, um, not too far from here in the <coughs> tower. Um, right. We have one right on with Sean and Olive. So people have more ways to vote. That's great. We're hoping that this will provide every single person an opportunity access. and access. Mm -hmm. um, so we're trying to make it easier and so we want to encourage every single person to get out and vote Just so before you know, March 3rd. We, we've you. been running that clip already showing Good. all the addresses. Uh, I began that at the beginning, well the last of uh, January because Good. it was a little bit different. I have the addresses and everything there so we're going to continue to do that. No, that's and also, I found out that for the homeless, they just have to tell the cross streets and they'll still let them vote. Yeah, and actually you can show up the day of, register to vote, and vote. You'll probably vote provisionally, but um, you It'll can still, right? yeah, you mm -hmm. can still vote. So well, we, more ways to get involved and to make a difference in this right. election. It's Good. so critical. So okay. your next uh, big Town hall will be when? Um, our next co for community meeting for the council probably um, later in March, early um, April. Okay. So we're going to be hosting some wonderful things every year. I also do a Women's History Month event where I recognize outstanding women doing phenomenal things in my area. Um, and so we're going to be hosting that in March. March. So we do have applications out there. So we want to encourage the viewers. If you know of phenomenal women in um, the area, can in we District nominate you? One, <laughs> no, I want to recognize other women because I know that there's phenomenal women out there. But we want to encourage viewers to submit an application. Um, we'll get to recognize about ten of them uh, in different areas. Um, so. That's yeah, great. I want to encourage. Super. Well, we really appreciate you coming into the studio so that we could talk about the homeless issue and whatnot and your run for Congress. And please let us know what we can do to help. Uh, we wish you the best. Thank you. And absolutely, we're excited for you. Thank you. I, I very <laughs> much enjoyed my time here. Invite me any other time you want. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. So there thank you very much. So, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for tuning in to Yo Soy Neighborhoods Fresno and watch for Esmeralda Soria's information out there. And let's get Fresno on the move. We have lots of work to catch up on. 30 years. <laughs> right? <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. Anyone interested in voting, you can go down to the county recorder's office at 2220 Tulare Street any day, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4 p.m., and vote. Or, if you don't want to go downtown, there are 52 voting stations. We have a list. I've placed that on Yo Soy Media Inc. YouTube for you to take a look this at. One. The closest location and be sure you vote. Those folks that are out there homeless are homeless voters. Yes, you can vote. Remember to state the cross streets where you spent the night and let them know you're homeless and they will allow you to vote at any of those 52 voting stations. Again, some are open 11 days, some are open only for four days. If you can't catch any of those stations, you can come back to the county recorder's office, 2220 Tulare Street, on February 22nd, and you can place your vote. So let's get out and vote.